Hi, Heather here for Sew It Yourself. Today we are dyeing and we are going to do this lovely snail trail and then some coordinating fabrics that match. Alrighty, to get started on this tie-dye adventure, you need a piece of fabric. We want it square uh, to do this snail's trail because our finished project we need a square piece of fabric so this is a little bit longer than what we need we can trim it down that's not a problem um you may or may not see the stain in the corner don't worry about that it's just a water stain and it does come out after we get finished the tie-dye process so i'm going to use a clip and i'm going to actually clip it right in the center here approximately just do a clip right there. Actually take a bigger clip. And then uh, the, it's best if you can do this on a large table or I'm actually liking to do it on a carpet because it has a little bit of um, friction so that you actually get nice folds when it's folding it up. Pull that out a bit. Okay. So now we're just simply going to rotate it. And if you want to rotate it the other direction, you certainly can do that. And then you just want to try and keep pushing those folds down so it lays kind of somewhat flat. And if you need to add some folds to make it look okay, you can do that. And then just keep twisting. I'm just going to turn it into a cinnamon bun, basically. Twisting. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's nice if you can get it somewhat going in some semblance of order here. Pulling those around, finish up. I like to get it fairly tight as I'm going, if possible. So there we have it. Of course, I forgot to bring the elastics with me. There we go. I'm sure you can just still see what I'm doing. So we're just going to tuck those all in. And then we're going to put three elastics on it. So one that way. One here. And one here, so it looks like a pie. And now I'm going to take the clip out, which is maybe the hardest part of this whole process. Now this side looks a little rough. It's a little folded up and whatever, but this side is nice and flat. And that's perfect. So now we're going to go throw this in a sodium carbonate. Uh, soaking bath for 10 to 15 minutes and then we'll move forward from there All right, here's our sodium carbonate bath and it is one cup of sodium carbonate not sodium bicarbonate baking soda, but sodium carbonate, which is like washing soda um, One cup of that to one gallon or four liters of warm water. 
<coughs> sorry, smoky here. We have forest fires happening. And then I just let it sink on its own. Only takes a minute or two. And once it's sunk, then we just leave it for 10 to 15 minutes. So it's been just about 15 minutes. I'm just gonna let it sit a couple more minutes while we mix up some dye. So right now I have some uh, turquoise. These are pro, uh, Procyon dyes, fiber reactive. So I have uh, turquoise and I have fuchsia and I have yellow. And these are the primary colors for the Procyon dyes. So uh, I'm just, from those, I'm gonna make up some other colors. So for example, we'll do some purple, put fuchsia in first. And then we'll add some turquoise and a little mix it around. And that's pretty good purple. So a lot more fuchsia than the turquoise. And then we'll do an, an orange. We want a fair amount of it because uh, we want it to soak right through really well. So then let's throw some fuchsia in there. Ooh, that's a pretty orange. Ooh. All right. So now we will do green, which will be turquoise. And yellow. And we've got beautiful green. Beautiful orange, beautiful purple. I think we're ready to go. Okay, so I just have to rinse off my hands here with a hose. We are going to take the project out of the sodium carbonate and squish it. I'm doing that off camera just because I've got that camera set so nicely and I don't want to switch it. Okay, so I'm just putting these down so that this can sit on top of it and I don't end up with it sitting in a puddle of sauce. Okay, so I think I'll start with our mixed colors. So I'm going to do each quadrant a different color. So we'll start with green. And you want a fair amount. And of course it's going to bleed into the other colors and that's just fine. And then we're going to go, I'm going to go this way around this time. Last time I did it I went the other direction. But basically, we're going to do the rainbow colors. Again, soaking it really well. Uh, purple. Purple is our next color. Maybe I'll do just a little bit more. Soak it really well. And we'll do fuchsia. And then we're going to do orange. We are coming up with a big puddle, but that's just fine. <clears throat> and yellow. We actually did a tie-dye course with... Um, some school kids, well, uh, preschool, I guess they were, or out of school program, I don't know. Anyway, now we're gonna flip it, and we're gonna do the same colors on this side. So I want lots of color on this project. Green. Yellow. Anyway, these are the leftovers from that dye project. And it just so happened I needed to do a large piece for <clears throat> a 
project coming up in the fall. We're going to have a um, quilt retreat and we're going to do a convergence and I'm going to, the ladies are going to tie dye their fabric, part of it anyway, and then actually do their convergence. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to just let that sit for 10 to 15 minutes. That's about all it takes. And then we'll come back and rinse it and see what we've got. All right, so while I was waiting for the other project, the um, snail trail to complete, I thought, oh, you know what? I've got lots of extra dye here. It needs to get used up. I hate throwing stuff out. So I'm just going to do some regular fabric. Either it will be used in this project or I will um, sell it. Say I'm a fabric store so I can sell. I, I do sell my tie-dye fabric. Hand-dyed fabric, whatever you want to call it. So I'm just going to show you how I personally scrunch it. So this is just wet fabric, sodium carbonated. Just let it soak for a while. And now I'm just scrunching it up. And interestingly enough, you can tell whose fabric it is by the way it's scrunched, because everybody does it a little bit different. I had a friend who kind of almost accordioned it and then twisted it and put it together that way. So it was very stripey, where the way I do it is more, looks like, broken ice with crystals and stuff. Now the key is to get really tightly woven fabric, <clears throat> which is not as easy to do anymore. But uh, just check your fabric stores. It does have to be 100% cotton for the Procyon dyes because it is a fiber reactive dye. It, it reacts with the uh, natural fiber the uh, cellulose fibers it won't work with wool and any animal fibers, but it will work with cellulose fibers. Okay, so I'm just gonna put you that way. So I think this one I'll do like blue, purple, green. Maybe I'll just do blue, green. And then I'll do a purple, blue and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to let it fairly well soaked. But it doesn't have to have any rhyme or reason. But you do want everything to be covered because you will still end up with white. Even though it looks like there shouldn't be any white, there will be. That looks much darker on camera than it actually is. Obviously I need to mix up some more purple, which this might be a totally different color of purple, you never know. Well, they're about the same. And I'm just going to mush it a bit because I kind of want those colors to blend together a bit. don't want it really spotty. I like to do it on these lids. They're like Rubbermaid lids. They, uh, they have edges, so it kind of contains the liquid, which is helpful. Okay, and there's that one. So I'll put that one aside. Always wash your hands in between times, otherwise you end up with dye there.
And especially if you're taking it out of the sodium carbonate, you need to make sure that you don't have any dye on your fingers or you will end up with it in the sodium carbonate <clears throat> and then it won't work for future projects. We'll do this one blue green and then that'll be fine. There's a little bit of blue on it. So we're just going to scrunch it up just like we did the other one. I'll fast forward this maybe if I can figure out how to do that. If it's not fast forwarded, you know it's because I didn't figure out how to fast forward. the blue purple one I have to be able to do this outside right now Up to see what we got. All right, nice. So again, I'll rinse that and then process it with a, a synthrapol or TNA, whichever I happen to have on hand at the time. Let's check out one of the other colors. All right, let's do the blue green one. dyeing process is if you just don't like the finished product, you just can dye it. Let's see what I don't know that I love that one. Let's see what it's like when it's all processed, but a little light. Okay, let's do the orange, yellow. I already have some color in that water, but who cares? but that'll all change when it gets washed. It comes out quite the color that you think it is when it's wet. Okay, one more to go. And it looks like I still have enough battery. So we'll do the multicolored one. off for a minute. I'll turn you on when I get this all spread out. All right, there we have it. So the light's kind of weird because it's like just about 10 o'clock at night here and we have lots of smoke in the air but I will process these tonight and then I'll give you a sneak peek tomorrow when the sun's bright and out and then we'll see what these look like. I don't think I like that green blue one. I might have to redo that, but I do like the rest. I think the rest are looking pretty good. 
especially with that snail. That turned out really well. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. So I was just doing the editing process and found out that I'm missing a whole bunch of video. So after the video camera died, it appears that I didn't turn it back on when I put it back out there. So I feel bad about not having the actual rinse of the snail trail and the rest of the dyeing of the um, extra cloths that I did. But anyway, next time, I guess, live and learn. All right, so there we have it. This is processed, so it's being washed in the Centropol, TNA, whichever, and uh, <clears throat> it has been dried. It's completely dye fast now. And this is one of the other cloths I did. I'm not super happy with that, but when I put it beside it, it does actually look like it belongs with it, so it might work. I do like that one, even though I don't love orange myself. And then our multicolored one turned out great. And then that's the one I did the day before. So a little more vibrant. <clears throat> Mind you, the dyes are a day older. So well, it looks the same in the camera. Um, dyes are a day older, and I may not have let it sit quite as long as I did in that one. Or the first one there. So anyway, uh, there you have it. I'm happy with it and I think it'll work great in the project and I will do a video when I put that quilt together. Thanks for joining and give me a like and subscribe if you think that you enjoyed it. Thanks.